I'm Jason Epperson. This is RV Miles, and it's time for the latest in RV and camping news. First up, several North Carolina campgrounds recently found themselves having to shut down due to a change in the state's interpretation of the National Electrical Code and the need for ground fault circuit interrupters, or GFCI, outlets on campground power pedestals. The deputy state fire marshal had required campgrounds to install Class A GFCIs on all newly installed or upgraded pedestals. The problem is they tend to trip a lot when RVs are plugged into them. A release from the Outdoor Hospitality Industry Association, or OHI, says that parks were reporting breakers tripping almost immediately because the appliances used within the RV can create leakage at the supply receptacle that can exceed the limits of a Class A GFCI device. I don't know if I really totally buy that reasoning. GFCIs are required at marinas, and if you put in an outlet at home, if the GFCI is tripping, there's probably a problem somewhere. Regardless, the National Electrical Code does have an exemption for RV power pedestals. 15 and 20 amp outlets on a pedestal may be required to be protected by a GFCI, but the 30 and 50 amp circuits feeding the RV are not. Of course, your outlets in the RV are probably protected by a GFCI that's built into the RV. Ojai and the Carolina Association of RV Parks and Campgrounds sent reps to attend the North Carolina Building Code Council public hearing and rally to speak with officials regarding their interpretation of the National Electrical Code, and the teams were successful in getting the case reconsidered with a unanimous vote from the Building Code Council. Representatives in Michigan have put forth a bill to give Michiganders first crack at reservations in state parks, according to the Detroit Free Press. Michigan state parks and forests have ballooned in popularity in recent years, just like pretty much everywhere else. House Bill 5597, introduced by Representative Cam Cavett, would give Michigan residents a two-week head start on reserving a campground, shelter, cabin, yurt, or lodge at a state park or forest before reservations could be open to non-residents. Quote, it's great to see so many people interested in camping in Michigan, but some of our most popular parks fill up so quickly that state residents have less than 20 minutes to get a spot before they're gone, Cabot said. He continued, there should be perks to living in Michigan. People who pay taxes that contribute directly to the quality of parks should be able to get first dibs in vacationing to those parks. Camping is supposed to be relaxing. Michigan families shouldn't have to plan their vacations by huddling around a computer in December and praying for a nice campsite. We've seen these bills in other states. Since January, Florida residents have been able to get a 30-day priority window to reserve spaces at state parks. Wyoming gives residents seven days of priority reservation time. This isn't the first time a bill like this has been proposed in Michigan, though. During the 21 to 22 legislative session, a similar bill made it out of committee but never received a vote in the House because the Michigan Department of Natural Resources opposed it, arguing that giving priority to residents could damage towns and regions reliant on tourism while sending a message that the state is not as welcoming to guests as it is to residents. All that said, maybe this isn't as big of a problem as some states make it out to be. DNR officials testified in 2022 that 89% of reservations were actually made by Michigan residents, while only 11% were made by non-residents. This episode is brought to you by Liquefied RV Toilet Tank Treatment from our friends over at Matt's RV Reviews. Matt tested out a whole bunch of RV tank chemicals and wasn't happy with them so he partnered with a chemical company to make his own and it now comes in liquid form with a really easy to use portion dispensing bottle and in drop-in form keep your tank clean and smelling fresh with lavender or orange scents it's 100 biodegradable and made in the usa you can find it on the shelves at select rv dealerships or on amazon visit liquefiedrv.com for more information that's liquefiedrv.com if you've been following the big frame flex conversation going on amongst fifth wheel owners, you might know that one of the big things that manufacturers of RVs and of frames use to explain it away is that folks are using aftermarket hitches that aren't approved. Hitches like the Anderson Ultimate Hitch. Anderson is so confident that this is absolutely bogus that if your active trailer warranty from a trailer frame manufacturer is denied due to the use of an Anderson Ultimate fifth wheel connection, they'll cover the damages. 
Another very popular hitch is the Gen Y Executive, which is a pricely but very well built total pin box replacement hitch, which can be in gooseneck or a standard kingpin version. Most brands do not consider this hitch approved, and if you have frame issues, they're likely to blame it on your use of an aftermarket hitch. Technically, they have to prove an aftermarket part caused damage due to the Moss Magnuson Warranty Act, but have fun going to court, you know. Anyway, the new kid on the block luxury fifth wheel manufacturer Brinkley has been testing the Gen Y with a Model G fifth wheel at third-party partner Navistar's new Carlisle Proving Grounds. According to a press release, the test results showed that compared to all other suspension systems tested, the Gen Y pin box had the most notable influence on protecting the RV. Gen Y says that rubber torsion arms built inside the hitch absorb up to 90% of the inertia between the truck and trailer, allowing the two to move independently. This removes chucking and bucking created by bumping roads and leaves you with a smooth towing experience. Quote, over the 10 to 12 years that I've been doing this, I've never seen anything have that big of a dramatic effect by just adding one item. This is one item that can completely change your tow experience, said Dominic Balancio, Brinkley RV Director of Innovation. The Brinkley Model G RVs are currently sold from the factory with an executive fifth wheel kingpin hitch. Customers have the option to upgrade to the gooseneck coupler model. Carl Borkholder, founder and managing partner of Gen Y, said, quote, outside of what some manufacturers have been communicating to customers that this could be the root cause of frame failure, this validates that it is simply not true. As a matter of fact, it's quite the opposite based on the data. Apparently, the unit itself was in really good condition after the rigorous testing, which is rare, a Brinkley executive said that usually at the end of a test, the RV is trashed no matter what the hitch. And to be clear, Brinkley uses Lippert frames just like pretty much everyone else. Active duty sailors and their families can now spend their entire tours at some Navy bases. According to a recent policy change as reported on by Stars and Stripes, the new policy, which took effect March 8th, permits active duty members and their families to stay in an RV park for the duration of their tours of duty without having to request an extension. Previously, Navy RV parks required visitors to renew their reservations every 30 days. The new policy permits them to extend based on availability, and it's particularly beneficial for naval officers who may have to move around a lot. Staying in an RV park allows them to prepare to move from base to base in a matter of hours instead of packing a house or an apartment to move. Love's truck stops are expected to dramatically expand their RV services this year, according to an interview with Woodall's Campground Magazine. Love's has been leaning into catering to RVers, even putting in full hookup RV parks at many locations. Three years after the national chain opened its first RV travel stop, the company now operates 57 locations catering to RVers with 31 more planned to open by the end of 2024. Love's travel stops have 644 locations in 42 states. A new showcase RV stop location will open next month in Hardin, Montana, in close proximity to Yellowstone National Park, with a dog park, a basketball court, communal fire pit, fire rings, and picnic tables, restrooms, showers, and laundry facility. Loves has been pretty good about buying all the land around them, often building hotels on site. These RV parks are sort of an extension of that. Luxury Class A motor coach maker Numara is set to release its new Northern Star line, what it calls an entry-level diesel pusher. According to an article in RV Business, Numar Corporation on Wednesday unveiled its 2025 model year motorhomes during its annual dealer meeting. Northern Star is a name that Numar used for a few years back in the early 2000s, but this new version replaces the Country Star and boasts a redesigned cockpit, brand new interiors, and a bunch of floor plans at a price point lower than its predecessor. Finally, get ready for a big year for cicadas. This year, the annual cicada invasion is what's called a double brood and will hit mostly in the east between late April and early summer. Cicada broods emerge in 13 and 17 year cycles. A few cicada species emerge annually, but rarely do both the 13 and 17 year species emerge from the ground together. In fact, it hasn't happened since 1803. Enjoy that. 
That's it for this week's RV and camping news roundup. Thanks so much for being here. Hit the like button if you got something out of this video. Subscribe if you want more like it. Hit that notification bell to get all the notifications every time we put one out. And we will see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye, everybody.